Call the regular meeting to order, March 4th, 2014. Alex Robinson, would you give us an opening blessing? All right. <coughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the services that are made possible by the city, that are enacted by the city council, and that are carried out by the, those who have been employed to serve us. We pray that there may be consensus and agreement in all good measures that are being considered this evening. And <coughs> we trust that, uh, and we wish to express our thanks for the various services which help to remove the snow from our streets sometimes during the night time and very early in the morning. We thank Thee that when we are getting ready to fry our pancakes that and the electricity goes off, there are those who get out very promptly and uh, Get it turned back on. Yeah, we thank you for the various services that we enjoy, for our our comforts, for our necessities, and for uh, all things which make help our lives to continue and to go on. We thank you for all the good, and we appreciate those who are serving and those, <coughs> their Heavenly Father, who have been elected to direct the affairs of our city. And all this we ask in the name of our Savior, who is over all in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> Do they have any further additions to the agenda? Yeah, Kim, I thought we needed executive session for the two five years. Under the legislature, we have to know the report. appreciate you guys letting us come in. Um, my name is Trey Bergen. This is Dwayne. Um, I just want to give you guys a brief overview of Ag360 for those of you who don't know how we came about or, or how it came. Um, Ag360 is, we're partnered with a Moundridge agency and an Inman office uh, and that along with uh, a local partner here in town, we created Ag360 Insurance. We are a full service independent agency which means we offer all all the different lines, all different carriers, um, and we are local. Our office is just old abstract building, 205 East Fourth, just right a couple blocks down the road here. That's where I'll be. I am the agent there. We are currently looking for a CSR to to also be in the office, and so we'll have a couple couple people there, employees. Um, we're local. The nice part is we have the Moundridge office where Dwayne's out of. They have all the experience, they have a lot of the contracts, 
they have the knowledge, and that's why I brought him along to talk a little bit about EMC, which is who your current insurance is through. Um, so he'll talk a little bit about that, but that just gives you a little background about Act 360. So I'll take, take it away. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we just thank you for coming and for letting us come. Uh, it's been an exciting ride. You know, our doors aren't even officially open, and we have been received even beyond our expectations. So we're excited to be here. Uh, as, as Trey said, we are an independent insurance agency. My roots are in Mound Ridge, but we have offices in Inman, Kansas, and also now here in St. John. So we're excited to be here. Thanks for letting us come. Well, the city is insured today, and our request today is for you to consider us to be your agent on the city insurance. Um, uh, really, I was telling uh, Mayor Owens when I had a chance to meet her a couple of uh, weeks ago, there's really good news and bad news. The good news is we write for the same companies that the city is today. So we can just take over your insurance if you should so choose. The bad news is I can't do any different on rates. Your rates are good. You're with the best company. I commend uh, John and the rest of you for, for the agents you do have uh, uh, out of Sterling. Ken Anthony is a friend. I know him. I've known him for many, many years. He's an exceptional agent. So you guys, when you went through your selection process some years ago, you certainly picked a good one. That said, we think we can match that service. And we're here and we're local. And we certainly... I love the opportunity to work with the city on your insurance. There's really two programs that you have. One, as Trey mentioned, is with Employers Mutual. That is your main policy. And Ag 360 insurance is contracted with Employers Mutual. So we'll just take that over. The Traveler's policy, which covers equipment breakdown on your power plant, is, uh, is through Travelers. And that Ag 360 insurance today is not contracted with Travelers, but our Mount Ridge office is. So if you would like to do that, that particular policy, John, when you get it in the mail, may say Mount Ridge. Just know it's all going to be serviced here. Trey will be the agent, and a year from now, that will get switched back over to A360. It's just one of those technicalities that we didn't get done quite in time to get done. But we can still handle it, and it would be the exact same programs and the same premiums that you have today. So we would welcome the opportunity and would officially, uh, Mr. Mayor, make that request this evening to you. Okay. But we hear, answer any questions. We're, again, we're... And, and just down the street, excited to be here, and uh, we're here for the long pulls. Yeah, basically, the way it was described to me is the agent <coughs> is the only thing we're changing. Right. You know, we will be leaving some money here in St. John rather than sending the agent money to Sterling. That's correct. Can That's we nice. change that at any time, or is that something that it, we have to wait for? It needs to be done on renewal, and it's an April 1st renewal. So it, if it's not done now, it probably needs to wait a year from now. Oh, okay. That's the ideal time to do it. Okay. Okay. The process we would help either the mayor or John through, but essentially, the, the somebody once you approve it, the, the council would sign. Somebody would sign on behalf of the council a letter that just says you designate us to be your agent. Uh, the current agent then gets ten days to rescind that letter. So the current agent may call and say, John, what are you doing? And I can, that's okay. And then uh, John already knows that. But uh, and then after that 10 days is up, then we would become your agent. So to make that happen before April 1st, we about need to know pretty quick. Okay. okay. But if not, certainly uh, it could be a year from now. But it needs to be done on a renewal date, which is April 1st. Okay. Good question. But any questions about our operation, too, we'd be happy to entertain. We just appreciate the chance to share a little bit with you tonight. So. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Do we want to move on that? On citizen comment? Or wait for administration. Either way. Okay. We'll put it down on administration. We'll let uh, Sidney Blanton from our economic development give us an update. I apologize, I got the dates wrong. I guess this was to you here last time. And, and maybe I did, so it, it might have been a communication error. Just <laughs> I have these again if you need to look at them. I know you received them last meeting, so if you guys want to look at I'm Sydney Blanton, I'm the program director of Stafford County Economic Development. And I just wanted to give you an update on our Healthy Communities Initiative. I believe Carolyn shared when we were first applying for it. And it's a grant through the Kansas Health Foundation. We since then received it, and it's 25000 for a year. So our year will be up April 1st. Um, 
That $25,000 was for a planning year to form a leadership team and pick a policy, pri policy priority that we wanted to focus on to make our community healthier and more active. And with the goal of that is the more active we are, the more healthier we are, the more prosperous we are, and the better our economy gets when we're healthier and active. Um, we will reapply April 1st to be accepted for three more years, so then we'll get three more years of $25,000 each to continue this. And we're focusing on active transportation with the goal of writing a master walk bike plan for each city of Stafford County. So we're focusing on Maxville, Stafford, and St. John. Um, and so we, our leadership team consists of members from each of the towns. So far we have done um, walkability assessment in each town represented in, so Maxville, St. John, Stafford, and Hudson. And then we've also done um, a survey just to see what the community thinks about it and what their views are and if there's anything that needs to be worked on. If you do have the slides, I can show you on um, slide four. It says the Center for Disease Control and Prevention states that seven out of ten deaths among Americans each year are from, from chronic disease. Heart disease, cancer, and stroke account for more than 50% of all deaths each year. One of the main behaviors related to these is lack of physical activity, and that's why we chose that. There's actually, I believe it's 62 percent, 62.6% of Stafford County residents are either obese or overweight. So we feel it's an issue that we want to try to raise awareness on and improve, and we think we can do that through improving our built environment by seeing, seeking out ways of how we can create trails through grants or um, fix sidewalks. And it's not necessarily trying to put pressure on people to pay for it, but maybe if we can come up with a plan, such as a master walk, bike walk plan, and apply for grants and show them that we are trying, that we have something, we know what we want for the future. And by doing this, it will create long-term change and not just short-term projects, but something that will develop for the future. So we took some of these pictures. This is on the 10th slide. We took some of these pictures throughout Stafford County. And these are in all the towns. And these are some of the issues. These are mainly sidewalk issues um, that maybe we can address or combat just to help people have an easier path, whether it's biking or walking to the pool or to the store, you know, connect it so that people feel like they can actually have active transportation and in the summertime go to the pool, go to the grocery store without hopping in the car. And what we have done so far on the next slide, we've been raising awareness. This year is our planning year. We're raising awareness and kind of figuring out what we want to do from here in the next years as we form this plan. So we have already produced a flyer. We joined in on the Get Active Kansas campaign, which is charged by the Governor's Council on Fitness. And you'll see that on the next page. So with that, we're supposed to do quarterly events just to show getting active can be fun and kind of raise the awareness and get people out and going. And you may have seen advertisement. We're doing the Color Me Lucky 5K run. That's one of our Get Active Kansas events that we're doing. And that will go, the proceeds will go to the St. John Hudson Education Foundation. There's also a walk with that, right? Yes, <laughs> two mile walk. <laughs> so if you don't want to run, you can walk too. So our goals are to provide a safe place to walk, bike, and run, and just make the active choice, easy choice, and increase active transportation. So I'll be reapplying, sending in the application April 1st, and hope that we'll get three more years of this. But for now, let's just start updating. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senate agenda. Approved the minutes for the regular meeting of February 18, 2015. Approved appropriation ordinance 304. 2014 at an amount of $74,684.76 from the below funds. Approve the appropriation ordinance 
0221201014 in the amount of $12,903.83 for the nitrate removal project. Do I hear the motion? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Uh, tonight we have Greg Wright with EMG. Uh, uh, he's going to discuss our uh, Midwest Energy contract. Uh, he's going to just kind of bring it up, kind of give a summary of it. If anybody has any questions, they can sure ask him. So, Greg. Thank you. Um, best thing to do here is maybe to. Um, it's been, been a while since we visited, but uh, what's what's going on? The reason we have this contract before us now is that part of the um, standard. Um, the contract, the contract that we had in place uh, was to go through uh, May of 2015. That's the service agreement you had with with uh, Midwest Energy, and it was a combination of power supply from them and then Omaha Public Power District (OPPD), if you recall. It was a five-year deal. It was to terminate on May 31st, 2015, the earlier of May 20, 31st, 2015, or the start of the day two market, which is a new um, power supply market that's been formulated in the nine-state Midwest region. Um, at the time they did the contract, both OPPD and Midwest Energy knew that they were there was discussions going on to, to restructure the power market in the in the area. Uh, there, it's already, it was already changed in the uh, eastern area, up around Indianapolis and east of there, and, and we knew what this area was going to follow, but we weren't sure when. So that's why I put the caveat that there'd be a five-year agreement, but this is going to have to terminate because the specific agreement we had wouldn't transition into the new market format. Not a big deal other than uh, it, it just... You, it just they didn't, we just said we'll terminate it. So they notified us recently. Um, there's a lot of speculation on exactly when that market would would uh, begin. Uh, there, that was the target date was March 1st, but there was speculation that it wasn't going to be ready. It could be the summer, it could be the end of the year. They weren't sure, so they kind of held off. And then they notified us a few weeks ago. Well, about a month ago, maybe or so, a little bit more than that, that, that they were going to terminate. We officially got a notice from OPPD. Um, a couple weeks ago, that it was they were exercising that right to terminate. The market is going live, or did go live, on March one. Um, this agreement basically is the same concept, um, with the exception of OPPD is not a part of it, and um, it is written. The changes to this agreement from what we currently have is uh, written to have language that would accommodate the new market. And to not to not get a lot into the new market, but basically, in the, in the way the way the business transacted before, if I want to buy power from you in another state, then I we we read a price and term like like you guys all, and then we secure a transmission path from one point to another, and that's basically how it worked. In the event that transmission path were to get curtailed, uh, which it frequently does, then basically I then that contract would be out, and I'd be looking for somebody else for that interim period of time until I could read. We get the contract together. Basically, that kind of still works as far as the agreement, but it doesn't actually get delivered from you to me now. If I buy it from you, you inject it into the market of your area, and then I withdraw from the actual market in this area, whatever price it is. So there's price. It's not the same kind of a deal. It's it's actually a a, a transacting market that that's going to exist. So every hour there's new pricing and what have you. So so we have the ability to do that. Uh, as with anything. It is a new market, so there's some volatility that nobody knows about. We don't know what to expect, um, so there was a lot of changes. But one of the things that is a little different in the in the past is that a city like St. John or really anybody can be could be a, an independent city out there uh, transacting some transacting on their own. This new market, one of the requirements is in order to access the market, you have to be what's called a market participant. In order to be a market participant, there are certain things that you have to do uh, to be uh, to be eligible to be that uh, certain levels of qualifications and whatever. Basically, 
individual cities, I think individual players necessarily aren't that. There's not very many that are market participants. The only ones that really are are the really big cities. Um, everybody else has bound up with other groups, and they've either formed uh, power pools, which which were existing before, but they they'd already formalized, and we we chose not to do that, and uh, we stayed independent, if you will, and. Um, some of the other ones formed through the Kansas Municipal Energy Agency have formed pools. Well, you guys, uh, as well as several other cities in the Midwest, hasn't really have the the drive or the need to form a pool, so you really haven't. This agreement, though, actually does that. It allows Midwest Energy, who is the market participant, to be the market participant. So we're working kind of under their umbrella. That's that's why this agreement. So this language is changed, and I'll go through some of the changes in it. But basically, while we're not part of a pool, like many other cities, we are part of a blanket agreement of Midwest Energy and the market participant. This would be that. So that's kind of the, the main gist of it. But when you look at that, one of the things that we, we've evaluated a lot is, is how good has this contract been that we've been on? Has Midwest Energy been a favorable contract for us? And, and that's kind of what I want to go through today. Kind of review how it's worked, and uh, then you said there's a the expectations going forward be similar. Although it's a new market, we're not sure exactly, but the expectations are um, should see some similar um, performances. Uh, I'm going to hand out a couple. I'm going to hand go through some graphs and stuff, and just it'd be easiest to talk off of these if you could pass them around. Um, if you could just pass these around. So, are they different ones? Well, this is all one right here. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is just, just, just so you guys can see, uh, I'll review. I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to hand out all the uh, the data. We can talk about it, but basically, all of this here is a summary of this chart right here, which is what your all of your monthly bills are. When um, when Johnny gets the bills and Mel gets the bills uh, from Midwest Energy, it contains a number of different parts. It there they, it has a firm purchase, non-firm purchase, and a buy-through purchase, which in our case was from OPPD. We, we opted not to get any firm purchase last year, or last three years ago. We chose not to, and I'll go a little bit explain about that. But you can see that's this column right here. There was none. We didn't transact any of that. And then you had the OPPD and the Midwest Energy non-firm. We did that because OPPD was a fixed price, and we knew what that price was going into it, and it was fairly favorable at the time we entered into it. The Midwest Energy non-firm was tied to their cost, and basically we were going to get their highest non-incremental, uh, highest incremental cost on the on the hour. So there was a little bit of risk in what the what that price might run, um, due to a couple things. One, the economy not being real strong for Midwest Energy, and uh, the um, the actual weather in 2013 and 2014 or 12, the market was low. A lot of things were favorable for us, and our, our energy prices were were uh, were low. Um, essentially, this if you look at this chart, this is your your system cost since 2004, all the way till the last month. Or I guess I don't have your very last month, but through 2013. That's your average price per kilowatt hour of the contract. As you can see, it kind of spiked up. The highest point was 2008 time frame. And that's when natural gas prices went pretty fairly high, and that caused the uh, energy market to go up. But if you see that lighter colored uh, column right there, that's when this act we entered into this new contract we got, and that's what we how many months we've been on. As you can see, it's the price has been uh, uh, you know fairly low. Uh, we've been down under four cents a kilowatt hour for a good part of the time, and, and uh, with the exception of the one month where it spiked up during the summer month. Um, We've had very favorable pricing. Matter of fact, some of our last three, four, five months, uh, some of our energy pricing is the same as we were paying in 2004. So, you know, you can see we haven't seen what a lot of others in the energy business. You've seen a lot of the prices going quite a bit higher. Ours has stayed quite favorable. And there's a, there's not a lot of reasons, but but we did buy, like I said, we did buy that non-firm energy, so we didn't pay a capacity premium during the time. And I'm going to go through that. And, and we were able to uh, purchase this non-firm energy. Go, this contract you had before us, like I said, is basically the same thing, restructured for this new market, and 
they put in there, uh, which they offered us last time, and we opted not to, a firm base load piece. And we chose not to do it last time. This time they put it back in there. They asked us, and we said we'd like to see it and look at it. And uh, my, my opinion now is that we benefited from not having that and, because you do pay a premium for it, but it, it ties you to not, those, not the market pricing that I've just told you about, but their system average cost, the utilities. So it, and again, when the differential, the spread between that non-firm incremental pricing and their system average price has been fairly low the last few years, there was no reason to pay that premium to get the system average. But see, now with this new market, I believe that spread's going to move uh, that quite a bit, so there, you'll be buying a system average price. And I'll, I'll go through that, what that means. Um, but this, I just want to show you that it's been a, it's been a very favorable contract for you, and uh, and the fact that we still have the ability to move forward into this. Normally, we would have to move, migrate it to a pool. Those pools have been quite a bit higher. Uh, I did, I did. Uh, I'll go through here. These packages take everybody take one of these. I'm just going to walk you through these so you can see. And I might have handed out. Who got, who got my top? That got my notes on. Let's see. I had, I think, maybe not, that on that back one. page. On the back page, I don't know that I need them, but I thought maybe there's the handwritten. Nope, I got them right here. I got them. Uh, nope, I got them right here. So you're all good. Um, this uh, 2013, this is your. This right here is St. John's out in love. And this is important because this is this is from December one, uh, or January one to December thirty first. That's the hourly load each hour. So as you can see, during January, February, like right in now today, you're running around one one to one and a half megawatts. Kind of coming right here. You're right in this time frame, and then it stays down in there. Then it spikes up in the late May to. Uh, you, know, you can kind of actually see that during the week. You can actually almost see that each week uh, throughout the t summer, and then it kind of drops off. Like right in here, this spike right here was probably a hot, last hot snap before September, and then it drops off, and you're down in this amount. So the thing is, you've got to have enough resources and, and what's considered capacity to cover this amount plus 13.6 percent. That's that's a requirement that you that you either own it or buy it. One of the two. In your case, because if you don't have it, you can't buy the non-firm because they have to be able to recall that. That's why it's called non-firms. They can kick, cut it at any time they needed to. Now they haven't cut it very much because they'd rather sell it. But if they if they ever get tight, they cut it, and you have to be able to generate your own power. So you have to be there. But if we have an opportunity to buy cheaper, we'd prefer to do that than versus firing up our own units to run. So it's a it's a backstop, but. You have to have enough capacity to meet that that amount plus 13.6 percent each year, and you can and you can meet that through a number, you know, like I said, purchase contracts or your own generation. Most cities will have a combination of those. They have some purchase contracts, and those purchase contracts you could buy just capacity only or capacity and energy. Uh, most cities will buy some sort of a resource that has capacity and energy. And then they cover the rest of it with their own generation. You guys are probably the more the, the exception versus the norm as far as all of yours is covered with your own purchase or own peaking capacity. So let's let's go if we can walk through that. That's that's where we've got on a load profile. The next chart here is uh, this is this is called a load duration curve, and this is exactly the same graph we were just looking at, except for instead of sorting it from January one to December thirty first, this is taking the, the highest hour of the year and then sorting it all the way to the lowest hour of the year. So it's the same numbers we just looked at but just resorted and it causes this low duration. So that tells you, and this is this is one hour and this is 8,760 hours. So it's not a calendar month, it's a number of hours. So the way what you read about this is saying how much how much load do we have on all the time? <laughs> And how much do we have on just a little bit? So obviously we don't have that three and a half on very many hours, just a couple hours. But you always have, well, you always have 500 kW. You don't always have a thousand, but you're pretty close. Okay. So just a few hours that you drop down a thousand, and you can go back and look at this, and you can see the thousand 
right here, there's not very many hours that it dips down below that. But that's what this is showing, is this is showing how much. So, so if you sit there and you look at this, and this is what we went out for bids when we went out and looked at different options, we said, okay, this is what we look like. This is, this is our fingerprint, if you will. And basically last year you bought uh, 11,814,000 kilowatt hours under, under this, and just it's just all one contract. Like I said, you don't have any other resources. And you bought it at, uh, um, you spent 521,000, and that averaged 4.4 .4 cents a kilowatt hour. Where other cities in similar situated pools and whatever were paying over six. So, as I said, that's that's substantially less. But that's because you're just buying it all because the market was low, and we bought all of it on the market. We were able to benefit. Now we bought some of it on. Um, if, if we can go to the, no, I'm going to jump back to this next button chart. But right here, if you go to the third page, here is what we basically the different resources that we bought. Since this contract, this is on that one light blue column on the first one, right here. This is a month to month, how much you guys bought. The red is what you bought from Midwest Energy non-firm, and the blue is what you bought from OPPD. I mean, it's all under the Mid Midwest Energy contract, but it was the two resources. So as you can see, when we first got into it, we were getting that OPPD. Then the transmission was getting curtailed a lot, and um, we... Uh, you know, for a while there, I, I was, I was, I was babysitting it, if you will, because our our obligation was to schedule it. We had to schedule a minimum of one megawatt and a maximum of three every month. That we had, we, we had a flexibility to schedule that. But if you if you look, this this down here is the actual pricing of the different contracts. Where the red is the pricing of the Midwest Energy non-firm contract, and the blue is the uh, OPPD contract price and, and, and if you can for me ignore the times it dropped down because that was basically when we weren't getting it if you can see it dropped down to zero on the times there is no blue up here that's because it got cut for the whole month and we didn't get any so that price really so you just ignore that and you can look at this and this is the price we were getting at along the top as you can see it was always coming in higher than the non-firm so once we saw that that, that the actual fixed price of that contract was higher than what we thought was going to be uh, a higher resource, we let it not come in. You know, we didn't we didn't try to we didn't we didn't hand hold the transmission because we were better off taking the more of the Midwest energy because it was cheaper. So as you see that price dropped quite a bit lower all the time and, it, and when every time we were getting it it was higher. So we just uh, took it and then towards the end there we were just doing, fulfilling our obligation to schedule, but it was always lower. The, the non-firm energy was, was lower. So, so that, that basically uh, was, this is, this is what we were seeing as far as price goes. Um, so we let, we let that go, and we were fine the way we were doing. But going forward, we're afraid this isn't going to, this red line is going to, we're expecting it to move higher. Okay? So, so to go into this furthermore, we think it's somewhat risky because of that new market change. And we're, we're exposing yourself. Basically, you're exposing yourself to 100% of this new market, 100% of the market. And uh, here, while we were exposed to 100% of the market, we had a backstop of the OPPD contract. And if it went out of line, then we would have been pushing to do more of this and, get, and backstop from that. But we, without that, we could be exposed. So that's why we went into that. Now we're moving forward to recommending that we take a one megawatt from the Midwest Energy contract which would essentially be this piece right here. You'd lay one megawatt, a firm base load resource in there, and what you have to do is they, they will, it's a, and it's actually this contract uh, calls for, it's a 1.1 that allowed us to go into partial incremental amount. And so uh, that would be basically 1.1 megawatts would be 82% a, a of your total energy. See, most of the energy would be covered under that contract. So it would remove your market exposure from 100% down to 18%. Because not 82% uh, of it's going to be now covered with this fixed capacity and energy contract, which is tied to a system average pricing instead of a market pricing. So that's what that's what that's what this piece is, and and they would they would have that. Now other cities um, contracted for this like um, three three of the other. Uh, uh, six cities all contracted for this the last three or four years. Um, three of us 
decided not to, and, and it was benef like I said, it was beneficial not to take it the last few years, but going forward, everybody's picking up some of them because of the same reason I just explained to you. Um, and it, it allows, now this contract, this baseload resources is changed um, to, to amount to be, it's about $10.72 per kW per month is what the capacity payment is for that. The energy charge is, uh, it is tied to the system average, so we don't know what it is. Uh, it's been running in the uh, low twos, $20, $20, which means the average price per kilowatt hour of this whole block has been running around $30. So that's, that's a really good price uh, block of power. Uh, this piece here, if, if it's the same as, as it has been, then we can expect uh, continued favorable pricing, which is right in here, which is running around 3 to 4 cents during those periods of time that it's red, but that's the one we're a little bit not quite as sure about. That's why I didn't really want to go 100% with it, and so we, we nailed, nailed that down. If for some reason that price does get um, more uh, sporadic, then we could then come in there later and lay an additional resource right here. Just You just want to win it for the whole year because you pay that premium. We could just take a, a summer resource here, another megawatt or something like that to fix in a fixed price. If, if, if we need to. Uh, originally, it was, we were kind of, the, the whole idea of this new market was it was going to reduce cost, but nobody really knows. The last two days, we've seen the prices spike in the, in the, in the short term. So, um, it, 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 what I've seen in the last two days of this new market has confirmed what I believe might be happening anyway, which is why I didn't want to continue to go the way we were going without putting in this. So. Um, so anyway, that is what this this new uh, firm block is all about. And the last thing here is this um, this piece right here is basically just wanted to touch base. This last graph is these are all the same, basically tied together. But I'm going back to the original graph. This is a load profile. But here here it is. If if you do buy that 1.1, as you can see, anywhere you see a blue line dipping down below the red line, that means you're long, okay? You're, you've got the 1.1 megawatt, that means your total load of the city was less than 1.1, 1 .1, 1,100, so you're long. And one of the reasons, that was, again, that was one of the previous reasons that we did walk away from it a little bit because there was enough hours that we were, we were long that did, you had to take it. You had to pay for it. You, for, you paid the premium for it, then you had to buy the energy, and you couldn't take it. It just got absorbed back in the system. The new contract allows you to schedule. If you only need 900, if our load's only 900, while we're paying that monthly premium for the month, we only have to buy 900 energy on that particular hour. So we don't have to buy more energy than we can use. So that, that, that made it more, more feasible. But this number right here, while it looks like it's down there quite a bit, it's really only down there 2.88% um, of the total amount of hours that you buy. You're only basically long 2.88% of the of the total energy consumed, it is 27% uh, of the hours. So of, of all these hours right here, there's 27%. There's um, 2,403 hours out of 8,700 that you dip below um, 1,100 kW. So you'd say 27% of the hours, but some of those hours is just like a fraction of the amount, but 2.88% uh, of the total energy. But again, you're not having to buy that energy, you just don't take it. So uh, that, that's, that's what you're at. Now, just to show you the rest of this thing here, you still have to, at that particular point, where you'd be sitting up is you've got 1.1 kW of capacity that you do not have now, that you would have, and then you've got, these, are, these represent your own units, and these are kind of approximate based on capacity, because you still need to have enough capacity to meet this black line here. That number is like a 3.88, I mean, no, I don't, know. I don't want to put you on the spot because you may not know, but the, your peak last year was um, 3.5, just under 3.5. Yeah, 3.5 to 6, and then I added 13% uh, of that, so it's like 3.89 is what you had to be at, and that's that black line. So that's your requirements. So you'd have 1.1, and then here's your first unit coming on. This is your Fairbanks, I think, uh, and then your next unit would be right here. And so uh, that's your second, and this is your third one right up here, that if you stack them all up there. Uh, previously, before you had that, you just barely would meet your 
meet your requirements. Now, it doesn't mean, like I said, you're not going to run it all the time, but it barely, you, you have to have enough in the stack, if you will, to, to do that. So you would certainly be running uh, these two units to meet that peak, and then you have another one as a backup. So you have you still have your, your, your stack's pretty good right now, but this but your exposure to the energy market is a lot more minimized by this particular arrangement. So that's that's what we're looking at moving into. This is how you'd be positioned for the next five years. Now if you grow or dramatically change, but you'd have to go up, you know, above there's two things you could do. I mean one, you've got room because if you if if this blue line grows, then this moves up. But you could always either pick up some additional capacity here or add additional capacity to your units or um, you know whatever you need but you don't have to do that right now so you've got capacity and you got enough capacity you have enough energy I mean you have uh, you know, like I said 80 82 percent of your energy be covered through that fixed contract and then 12 percent would be just taken off the market and um, Midwest Energy transacts that so here Here's the changes that we, we, we would see in this agreement. One, it's a fixed base resource of 1,100 kW at a demand and energy charge. Uh, the energy charge, the demand will be changed. It's, it's tied to their cost of their purchase capacity that they buy. Uh, the energy is tied to all of their system energy price. And then there's a um, $1,500 uh, a month customer charge. That is basically their what they consider their customer charge for being a part of their market participant arrangement. So they would be, because they're going to be doing all this transacting, they have to schedule it and they have to do that. So they put a put that fee in there that, um, you know, everybody's uh, expected to pay because they have to do, um, they're basically doing it all for us because we're not set up to be able to do that. Uh, and then the last thing is, um, is the um, previously, they put a three dollar charge on any any service we brought in from the outside um, uh, their territory for the ba for the firm, and a six dollar charge for anything. So on the OPPD power that we bought, they added a six dollar uh, wheeling charge to it. Uh, it's three dollars now. They dropped that to three dollars because to now with this new market, it doesn't matter where it's coming from or whether it's firm or non firm. It's just the same. So if we do bring in something else later down the road, it'll be a, we can go find a resource anywhere we want if we want to, and it, they'll assign it to St. John, and, and then we'll just pay the lesser amount of the uh, wheeling charge on that. So, but basically everything else is pretty much the same as it was. So. This first 1100 kilowatts or whatever mm -hmm. that, that you think you say we need to lock in or whatever. Right. Comparatively to what we have been paying, where are we going to be at? Or a bit higher and less? No, it, it, it's actually that, that's that's a good question. It's really hard to do now. Uh, I think it's I think where you, where you're going to sit with this combination, we're going to sit in fairly close to where we're going where we're at right now. My anticipation is our cost shouldn't move much at all because we're going to be this block is going to basically. I think going to bring us in cheaper than what we had, but I think this piece above it's going to be a little bit more. So the expectation was, um, with with all things settle out, we should see pretty similar utility bills as what we've been seeing. Them. Now, if we didn't take that base and we went all exposed to the market, I th I think we we could see higher. I think this this block is going to shield us from some of the increases that I that I feel. Well, if you think the block is actually going to be the same or maybe even a cheaper than where we're at today, right. why wouldn't we do 100% in that block? That's a, that's a great question. Okay, and I, and I should have probably... The, the reason you don't do that is because it's, it's you pay per month for a certain amount of it. And if you that's what this thing does. If you, Once you go above where you're at right now, see, as you can see right there, you're actually not even using it at all. Right. So if, if we let's just say we took, I mean, it's a use it or lose it system. Right? It, it, it's it's not a, it, that's what it used to be a use it or lose it. The only benefit of this is you don't have to take it, but it, it's it's like you have to pay. Well, the, see that 1100 cost us ten dollars and you know seventy two cents per month. That's ten thousand dollars a month. 
if if you you know as you can see if you if you took three and a half megawatts of that you'd pay thirty thousand you know plus dollars and only use you know more than you know a megawatt of it for for one hour and you'd pay that every month for a year so what it is is you got to find the right time the right amount that you're not going to I mean you could probably go up to one and a half but then it would be long so you'd be long every time you're above that every time you go above that you're long and just you lose your efficiencies of it okay. so if 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 I if, if it gets really swings a lot then yeah you would go ahead and say okay I'm gonna pay that premium because I'm gonna lock in more of that cheaper energy uh, I'll throw some of the energy away or not even throw it away not even take it just just to have because I'm gonna save so much here then then you would do that but right now we're we We've kind of optimized that. So actually, the one megawatt is what I thought we were going to take. But when they, in the last meeting that Mel and I were, they, they, they said that they would let us go to partial megawatts, which they wanted to do last year. You had to take one, two. Well, two did not work for us because, see, you're only, you're only using it for this many hours. The rest of the time, it's just you're wasting it. It'd be like buying a 10-ton tr truck if it's only hauling five tons, but then one day a year, you're, you need to haul 10 tons. We don't go and buy a 10-ton truck. Right. You may just go you know, borrow friends for what one day, just buy your five ton that you can use every day. So that's kind of what it is here. So, but he said this time we can do this. So we upped it to 1.1 megawatts just because, but I think 1.2 or 3 was kind of making us long. And so the efficiency, so we, we, we kind of zeroed in where we think is the, is the best, the best amount. Now, so are you held to the 1.1 .1 for the life of the contract? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Now I do think I do think if if we need to down the road we can always add to that. But you got th this is this is very normal to a normal way you look at power supply. Uh, if somebody if somebody just not me somebody that didn't well look at here the first, and they looked at the you know, this is what this is what you guys got right here the first thing they're going to say is you need base intermediate and peaking. Everybody needs base, intermediate, peaking resource. Uh, you guys, so you, you start doing it. So base is, is this. They would draw this line and say you need about a megawatt. Well, that's what we do. In an intermediate, I mean, and see, the, the way you price a, resource, a base resource, expensive capacity, cheap energy. Intermediate is cheaper capacity but more expensive energy. Peaking capacity is cheap capacity but expensive energy to run. So. So if you get ba whatever base, you want to be able to run it a lot, okay? Then the intermediate would lay in here something that's going to run, you know, 20% of the time in here. Because it's going to be cheaper to own on a monthly basis, but it's going to be more expensive energy. But you don't buy that much energy. And your peaking capacity, which is your own plant, is the cheapest of all to build and own. I mean, it doesn't, I know it's not cheap, but it is compared to this and other stuff. And like a, a nuclear plant or coal plant, it's cheap to build, it's just expensive to run. Does that bother you? Well, no, because it's only running a few hours. Okay, but it meets the capacity, but it's only running. So, if you were to say, "I'm going to use my own my own unit to be my base resource," that would be not smart. It would be cheaper per month, but it would cost a fortune to run. If he's out there running every single day, this here we're going to be running this this energy here is going to be anywhere from one and a half to two and a half cents a kilowatt hour, where it'd be a hundred dollars to you know, 10 cents a kilowatt hour to run on your own plant. But so you just so it's a combination. So right now, looking at this, so if you're here, somebody would say base, intermediate, peaking. You've got peaking. You still have peaking down here. You now have your base. Intermediate's the only place you're shy, and that's what we're picking up from Midwest Energy. Okay, we're basically picking up their 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 that the, they're buying they're selling us the base here and the intermediate and our non-firm and the peaking we're basically providing ourselves. Now I would I would say if the only other thing you'd possibly do is maybe I would say your 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 now will be very healthy and based resource where you've never had it before. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend going much more than that at least not right now. Yeah. Okay. That's a great question. Why not buy more of it? So that would be that would be what the action would be. It'd be to approve that agreement, which. Like I said, basically um, fulfills your base and intermediate requirements through the firm and the non-firm. 
Honestly, like I said, you're currently right now being fulfilled all of it except for the, the peaking capacity you're providing. You're still going to provide it. You're just basically now adding the base resource, which will be a capacity and, a, and an energy. And that would actually start, I mean, uh, effective uh, March 1, but they would, you know, if you don't approve it, then we're basically just like we are right now buying it all on a non-firm basis, they, which is fine, um, but they've, they've committed to, you know, if, if we go ahead and execute it and we play, they make it back from March from March 1st on, that's what we got. Which certainly, like I said, the last couple of days, the market's been fairly high in that non-firm. So, it was, over the first few days, <laughs> it's a good decision to do this. Um, Any other questions or thoughts? Um, I have a question for okay. you. Um, can you, I, I don't understand this right here. Maybe I'm missing something, but on page uh, two right here, D. What was that two? Um, right here on page two, D. At the top. Very top right there. Yeah, that's that's the same thing you've got right now okay. uh, on non-firm. What, what it is is that that that's the transmission for their system. I wasn't going to go go into this a lot, but the, 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 uh, the, it can be. Um, uh, there's any reason transmission gets curtailed, and that they, they do it. That operator says there's no transmission. You need to get off, and they they did it. A, I mean, not very many times last no. year. 2012, a few more times. Right. But that, they'll call you. See, that's why you couldn't be on this contract unless you had your own capacity, because there is times that gets cut, and then you have to, you know, you have so many hours. I mean, they usually try to give like a two-hour notice or something, as much time as they can. And then you got to start your own generation. Yeah. Just pick up your own load. It can be on the hottest day, and they say we're going to, you know, not available, so we have to carry our own load. So basically, what it doesn't happen very often, but it is a possibility. And they can't do it to that firm block <coughs> mm -hmm. unless they lose, the, you know, the way well, to provide it to us. And that, and that's what this, that's what this is saying, though. This firm block, the non-firm, mm -hmm. is just that. It can be cut. It's not firm. I mean, they're not committing to be firm with it. This is saying firm. Now, firm. Some people say you, you know, no matter what, you got to deliver. Well, they say they will deliver it unless it gets transmission that's not available. Then they just can't. Okay. So that's our caveat that if they don't. All right. So, to you guys, that's not a worry because you have your own capacity. You can run. Uh, now, certainly, we would, we would run. If, if it says non-firm gets cut, they'll just drop down to the one. But if that's that paragraph right there is indicated, he got to go to zero. And so he's he's running. Okay. Okay. Right, Thank you. Okay. So do we need to take action tonight then? I believe so. Let's keep playing them. Any further discussion or questions for Greg? <clears throat> do you recommend this, Greg? I do. I do. I recommend it because, and that's why I wanted to spend a little time showing you about the performance. Because one of the things you do on this is, like I said, you. We need to be a part of somebody bigger than just us, and um, you know I, I wanted to show you that, that that we've been treated pretty well on our current existing agreement. So it's kind of like who do you hit your wagon to, and and uh, they've been very uh, and Mel, you've had good work with them, working relationship, and um, so the fact that you guys have had, I mean your your wholesale power supply has been very favorable. I mean I I, I work a lot of cities. A lot of stuff, and, and uh, you know, I can't be more pleased with the way this has been the last three three years or so. So, uh, you know, everybody's apprehensive a little bit with this new market, but I believe that under this arrangement, you know, we won't we'll be the same as everybody else. But we're you know we're we're under there. If, it, if ours going up, everybody else is going up too. So also, if ours goes down, or else can. But I think ours is right now. So far, we've stayed just 
a glow, kind of everybody else. So I'm recommending that you guys uh, move forth the new agreement, and I'll furthermore recommend that we do acquire the 1.1 megawatt resource. And well, I'll make a motion that we uh, go into this agreement and purchase the 1.1 kilowatt or megawatt. Megawatt, sorry. I hear a second. Uh, second there. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. And you sign that and yeah. give yourself a sign. Actually, yeah, you've got one. So just go ahead and sign that and we can get set aside. Thank you, thank you John. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. They did. They approved it last week. Um, and they they took a a little smaller amount of base, like because they're a little smaller. Load. So they took one. Instead of one point Wasn't one. we working with them on this last contract? Yep. And then we did this time too. And and Lauren did as well. Oh, yeah. Lauren did the cross and Colby all signed the exact same agreement. Just t everybody took different amounts based on their size of the load. Okay. Do we have an address? And they get through. Plant back up and run a little bit? No, no, uh, not yet. They're working on it, but so that's a good question. They, they, they. I say, how do they manage their peak side? Then? That's that's a great that's a great question. What they've had to do last year, we actually bought. I was working with them and bought a megawatt from another city to cover their peak for just the summer months. So we bought some from Larned and moved it over, and they're going to do that again this year until they do have their plant up and running, because. So, theoretically, if, if they lose a line going in, then they won't be able to cover all their load, but they meet their capacity because they're buying from another city to cover them. You guys aren't really plagued. You're not really in a position to sell access, but you don't have to buy any, so you're good. So it's the same. They're doing the same agreement. There's five of you across Colby and Larned and Stafford and St. John. So, good, good group. Okay. Thanks again. Next item is a bid for grazing of the sewer ponds. We have two two bids. First for everything. Thanks, Greg. All right. Yeah. Be careful. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Frank has a bid for six hundred and thirty-nine dollars. That's just annual one year. Right, and that's from, from April 1st to, to September. Yes, September. There you go. Or when you say they need to get off. If, if there's, I don't know if that's actually addressed in there, we actually be within a drought or a disaster. Number. She, we can cut, curtail the number if we see it, you know, if it's okay, But it is in the contract. Yeah, it's yeah. To be able to do that, yeah. Okay. And then we have Priority Ranch, Inc. It's a bit for $599 to manage the grazing sewer column. April 1st to September 15th. Who's, uh, who's been doing it in the past? No. This is the last one. Yeah, yeah. Priority Ranch, Inc. I think it's a, one of the Hildebrand staffer. I could be wrong. Yeah. The other one was higher? Yep, yeah, 639 and 599 have you had any trouble with the one last year? No, oh, no, they've done it for the last I don't know, three years or whatever. It is. They have no issues. Do I hear a motion to accept the low bid? I should you know have said. the high bid. I mean the high bid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not very often do we do that. <laughs> I would say we don't see any problems yeah. being able to work with him or anything. We, I mean, he, I mean, contract's contract. So. I mean, that's, you know, we've okay. had a good working relationship with the previous. Hopefully that would continue with whoever you guys decide on. Okay. That was a cheaper... The one we worked with is a cheaper one. 
Sheep only, then I guess if, if it you does put ghosts, he wouldn't qualify, right? So, because that's this was available for everyone. Right. To look at. Has he been? Did you show this him that available. when they, This is what he actually did. I mean, he's, he put that's that was on our website. He probably just printed it right off the website and filled it in. He okay, filled it fine. in. If he read it, it says sheep that's only. Right. So, so go show up. Don't work. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Pull row. Motion carried. Okay. Next slide. So you have staying for conflict of interest? Yeah, conflict of interest. Sorry, no. Okay. That's all right. Okay, I'd like to request an executive session on elected like personnel <coughs> for, uh, uh, let's go on. eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight. I did that one other that, time. That's an amazing figure you come up with when you do that. <laughs> uh, including myself, council, and would ask uh, Sherry to be excused if possible conflict. So. I don't care if that was going to be Yeah. Okay. I don't know if those got turned off. Don't hear them. Are they supposed to be up or down? Yeah. Okay. Don't hear a motion. Make a motion to make for that executive session. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carried. Thank you. Consumer confidence report. It goes out every year and has to redo with the water. And we're going to be sending out a, what it is, in addition to that, is a drinking water monitoring requirement that was not met by the city. And I just wanted to explain that to you. We're required to take two samples every month of our water and send it into Topeka to get it analyzed. In December, when I it came to the last sample of the year, I was on vacation and had really nothing to do with it, but the guys had a problem out at the water plant, a coupling broke on a chlorination pump and they were working to get it fixed. And by the time they got it done, it was too late to get the sample in the mail to get it to Topeka. Okay. The next week, the lab wouldn't take it because of the holiday for New Year's and everything. You can't send it in after you know, Wednesday's the last day. So we, Matt called up the lab in Topeka and said, if we go ahead and take the sample in January and get it in, is that okay? And they said, yes. Okay. Did that, sent the sample in. The higher up said the lab should never have told us that. The sample should have been taken and just been late. In other words, even if it had been taken Friday and didn't get there, we would have met the requirement as far as having the two samples done in that month. So. We got two, two mixed messages there, and the higher-ups said that because we didn't get that sample in within that month, had, had it been, you know, the, the next, next or in November, it wouldn't have been an issue, but it was the end of the year, and we're, we're, we're done for. So we have to send out a, we're going to send out the consumer confidence thing, and it's just a, a letter saying that, you know, water was safe, it's just that the city failed to meet the, the number of samples sent in. So... I just wanted you guys to get asked what happened. 
nothing to do with safety of the water, just a matter of we didn't get the right. And so we, we know next time if something like that would happen, that we'll just we'll take the sample in, it'll be late, they'll send out another bottle, we'll take it, and then everything you know should be okay. So it's just a matter of how it worked out, unfortunately. So that'll go out with the, just to save on postage, we're gonna send that out. We have a year to, to send out that notification. So we're just going to send it out with our consumer confidence report. Which will go in the next bill. Next bill. So if you get asked, that's what it is. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all I have. Um, but Bob? Yeah. Bob, you have a five minute executive session? No, I. you guys already took care of it. Okay. All right. Anything else for Mel this evening? Mike Sanders is absent. Uh, Adam Saylor, please. Oh, Adam, Adam. Any questions for Adam? Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. John Stanford. Yeah, the first thing I have on there is the petty cash account. When we had our audit, um, right now our petty cash account is at the American State Bank. And our regular checking account that all of our accounts payable and payroll is over at the St. John National Bank. And um, the auditors were questioning why we do that. And in, without getting into all the details of how everything is put into the system, they recommended that we move the petty cash account over to the St. John National where it's in the same place as our regular account because that can be clearer and much better track, better paper trail thing for, and, and it's probably going to be in the audit report anyway, so I thought we might as well get started. The sooner it's in this year, it's easier for us to get accustomed to doing that. Um, to do that, we would need a motion to, to move that bank account. That's what you're going to do? Yes. That's, that's the recommendation that they gave us that is day. That a, that's not a very big gap. No. I mean, it's $1,100. And, you know, every month you guys look at um, the $1,100 on the petty cash account when really and truly it might be $850 at the time, but we keep it replenished to $1,100. And that's where they're saying, we would like to see this, the true number kinds of things. You know, it reconciles always, you know, perfect like it should, but on our reporting it shows us the 1100 instead of the actual at reconciliation. So. Well, I'll make a motion to move the petty cash from phone from UMB to St. John National. Second. A ASB. Or whatever it is. Okay. Sorry. And did I hear something? Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried by Thank you. Um, you put the trash mm -hmm. service contract. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you guys didn't read it, um, we added a clause in there to where this is an unassignable contract. Um, so if Saver County Trash Service wants to sell to whoever in two weeks, that contract does not go with the sale. And, and the reason being is it's not fair to the taxpayers to have, to award a contract and let it be a marketable piece of business is the reason that was added. So that, that it can't. The, the other thing I have a problem with is on this, on number 10, where if we have problems, somebody notifies the Stafford County Trash Service, that gives them 14 days to cure the default. If the default continues and the city gets involved, which gives them another 14 days, that's 28 days or a month that in all honesty they can go without doing their job and not be penalized for it. 
Um, and it's like everything else. Once you do something, you have everybody complaining about it that you've done it. But I have had a lot of people. Um, a couple of them I know you guys have got hit by, same as I have. Some of them you haven't. That have been complaining that their trash ain't being picked up every week. And I've also had to call him and have him come dump our dumpsters and other things. This is the only thing that you can do to where if you don't do your job, you still get paid for it. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like to change that somehow to where there is a penalty for trash not being picked up. Because, I mean, people are paying it, whether they get it picked up or not, and I don't think that's right. And there's a lot of older people in the town that probably don't use enough trash in a week to fill the trash can or whatever. They won't ever know it if it's getting picked up or not. But to me, it's just, you know. there, there needs to be a stipulation in there somehow. I don't know how we do it. That's the only problem. I mean, I don't know whether somebody calls into the city and it ain't done the next day, the trash ain't picked up by the end of the day or whatever, that you have an issue or what you do. I don't know how you do that. But I would say 28 days to have somebody correct them not getting their trash picked up is way too long. So what do you want to cut it down to? To 14? Or you well, want no. To I, like instantly, somehow. Well, I mean, well, I it, we 14 days. Period on this. Well, but 14 days mm -hmm. is two weeks. Mm -hmm. How about seven and seven? That they're not, they're, they're not able, if they don't do their job, it still doesn't matter. They still get paid for it, and it still charges you. Mm -hmm. I know. I realize that. I don't think that's fair. If you I tell me we, to spray your field, to give I don't them do enough it, time to do something when they uh, when they if something does go wrong, we need to give them plenty of time. But uh, well, I don't know. This. The only thing I look at this and I say that it says where it's, if this continues, the city shall hold a public hearing. I'm not sure city why we would is, have to if Trafford County trash is in default at the public hearing. Then Stafford County Trash Service shall have an additional 14 days to cure the default. Plus, you're not, that's 14 days. That's not saying that it's not going to happen. The public meeting ain't happening on day 15. No, and. and <laughs> that's why I'm saying this still could take up to thing, two months. I'm not sure why you need a, a public hearing yeah. for a private contract. I don't know. I, I don't know either. I guess we but, don't. But to me, I'm just saying, who, who made the agreement out? Well, Terry did, but it's very similar to the one that we had before, so I'm sure he kind of just went off of that. So it may be that we just need to have him come in and negotiate some of these items or something. I well, I was going to say that's well, just yeah. totally well, unacceptable. Well, didn't we have a list of things that, that needed to be done? I thought we'd come agreed upon a well, list of things that need to be taken yeah. care of. This ain't even been signed them yet. No, no, it hasn't. No, but we did come up with a list of you did. details. Well. And and it wasn't to be in the contract. It was just when I called him, mm. I said, here are the concerns that they wanted me to submit to you. Right. With telling you that you got the bid. Right. And so, you know, and he understood exactly what I was talking about. We discussed it. Mm. Um, like that first sentence, we will grant 14 days, and that should be like the two days. Well, I was going to say, I would think if you're supposed to have your trash picked up yeah. on a, this week, that it ought to get picked up of course this week. Come, of course they're going to come back next week and get it. Well, maybe, but they wouldn't even have to. they got like a month and a half to figure out when to do it. Right. Yeah. That needs to be modified. You guys jump in anywhere. Is there any other number 10 is obviously an issue. Is there any other items here that maybe needs to be that you have concerns about? No. Uh, the only concern I wanted or that, that we had was making it where the taxpayer's agreement wasn't a Marketable and item in that this this deal, huh? And you said this was in here. Did Number eight. There okay. shall be no assignment of this franchise agreement without, without written consent, consent from the city. city. Yeah. Okay. So 
I mean, so it's not like he can sell the business and to, to Kevin okay. Davis, and Kevin Davis automatically knows that for the next four and a half years he has St. John's business. Without city Without us approving okay. it or the whoever's on the council at the mm -hmm. time, if it ever does occur. Okay. So we need to just talk about number 10. Number 10 is the only one I have an issue with mm -hmm. on the agreement. Okay. This is... Does anybody have another number besides two days? I would say go with seven. I know that's a large number, compared, but it's smaller than this right here. Well, they should be yeah. back in seven days anyway. Well, yeah, I was going to say. Well, I think if you, I think if you can't pick normally, up the trash that week, they give you your money back. And, and guys, I will say this. Normally, if we get a call, we, we have them call directly to them, and I think it's usually taken care of. You know, if somebody says, you didn't get my trash, you may be hearing something else. You know, we don't get that call back. So my assumption is once they call out there, then somebody goes and takes care of whatever if they miss someplace. So if you're hearing something else, then um, that would be a different issue. But I've only heard a couple of instances here that have mm -hmm. complaints. So I mean, there are, they are out there, but they've been taken care of. Does anybody think there was any snow days that they didn't get their trash picked up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there was one time because they can't, they have to dump their trucks. And if where they dump at in Reno County isn't open, mm -hmm. they can't pick up here. There was one time I think they just couldn't get around. Is that yeah, what it was? Yeah, it was so slick. They yeah. said they yeah. couldn't yeah. really, any alleys they were concerned about, so I guess they didn't want to run into something. Or delay or whatever yeah. they did. So it was fun. That's the only time I know of as for weather related that that I that's can what recall. That's what my point is, I still get paid. Yeah, yeah I mean, if, well, if they, they, if they can't it run, on, if they can't run on Wednesday, to me, they if they have a Monday Wednesday. through Friday route and they can't run on Wednesday, hey, you're running on Saturday. People are paying for this to be picked up once a week. And that trash can needs to be dumped, whether there's five pieces of paper in the bottom of it or it's heaping full. And that's not getting done. If the trash cans ain't overheaping half the time, they get left alone. So, like I said, that, I mean, 10 the only I have an issue with on that contract. I think it needs to be addressed. The notice needs to go the next day. And then they have two days to comply. And then what? And then you guys change it however you want. Well, I know generally to get problems cured, the, the, minute, the minute you start cutting into the open in somebody's billfold, problems start getting cured. That's the way I think it ought to be dealt with. Okay, so Mel gave you an example of how some communication situations happen with the, the water test. So imagine that there could be a communication error with, you know, wherever the complaint came to wherever, whoever was supposed to go back out. Maybe this form will help that we're going to go through the next item on our agenda. Well, that's just for internal uses, but but the thing, and yeah, it'll they show. Call into you. Yeah, they they do, and we send them on. But we can we will document it. But if you just do two days, and then their default of their contract, that that seems a little harsh too. Just that there are situations that sometimes they just may not communicate well, or through no fault of their own. I'm just. In, well, in any business, sometimes I'm just, those I'm just saying it's not fair to charge somebody if you're not getting the service. And however that's read <laughs> is way too long. Mm -hmm. I mean, theoretically, that could take 60 days to line all that out. Yeah. I mean, that ain't right either. So I'm not saying I know what it needs to be at all. I'm just saying I just don't agree with that at all. If they uh, if they're found a default at the public hearing, then the Stafford County Trash Service shall then have an, then have their pay decrease or uh, funds. Well, I don't know, but we don't need to worry about it 
after 60 days or you know even a month. I think it needs to be dealt with quicker than that. I can take it to Rod and see if he has some ideas or. That'd be fun. You, you accepted the bid in your for five years in your uh, motion, so we're covered for our services. This hasn't been signed yet. The mayor has to sign it, but you guys, she wanted you guys to approve it. So I'll take it to Rod. We're still covered, and um, this starts what? Is it? Fill it in, Tom. Yeah. We'll say it ain't nothing's filled in yet at all. Right. I mean, it's so okay. It may be that since it's not something that has to be voted on by you guys, it may be that we can just get out something revised and see how you feel about it before the mayor signs it, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, that's oh, the, the only reason she thought she could add that other one without mm -hmm. talking to the council was because that was in protecting the city. Right. This other deal, I don't know that will fall under that, so it may take a motion. Your motion still stands that you accepted their bid. Yeah, right, but to approve the contract, yeah. Yeah. it may take a motion to approve the contract. With the changes. With the change, because they're, that's not. But following. you didn't approve the con of the contract earlier. I'll find out I'll say, whether we need to or not, and, and if we need to, to call a special meeting so that um, we get within the guidelines of when the old contract is done and we need to have something in place if that motion isn't enough, then um, we'll just have to make sure we have a quorum and everybody's had a chance to look at whatever's revised in. Is that a plan? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think you're going to have to go too. Oh yeah. I mean, we need to know what Yes. Uh, is that on yours or not? Yeah, it's on new business. Okay. Yeah. Back to the insurance that renews on April 1st. Does everybody agree or disagree that we should give that percent to our local agent? The same money? Sorry, second. Sorry. All, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Was Bob seconded? Uh, I did. Mark did. Okay. All those opposed? Motion carried 5-0. Assume you'll write a letter to her yes. call. And I will be letting Kent Anthony do the same. So. And they, they said they yeah. increase it. Was it not? It wouldn't go up in any no. Wouldn't go down in either. Yeah. It's, it costs them the same as it costs Kent. So. Yeah. So basically, all we're doing is just changing the agent. Giving our agent fee to somebody local instead of yep. out of town. Yep. So. Okay. On new business, did you all see the complaint report that Julianne wanted to put into service? Which will change it to the city of St. John. Well, we can detail it right now. This is for employees, or this is no, for. She basically wanted this to be for internal. So we have, if somebody calls or somebody complains, we actually do have a complaint form now. If somebody comes in and says there's a pothole and such and such, we have them sign a complaint form and, and put it in. If they have problems with a neighbor who has trash all over or something like that, they sign a complaint form and stuff. We don't make up a complaint form. If somebody just calls and says, my trash it hasn't been picked up, we just say, call this number and talk to them directly. Um, what she wants us to do, uh, my understanding is that we would make this up for every phone call or um, person who comes through the door no matter what the situation is um, and then there's you know whether we tell them to call 
out there or we send it on to mail, we would be then responsible putting this form where it needs to go and keeping track of. Um, well, I do like that idea, and, and I know it's more a pain in the you know what for you, but. Mm -hmm. It would, it would give, yeah. it would, well, but also, and, you know, if somebody says we could we've had a lot of complaints about the trash service, we'll know. Yeah, and my thought is we could whatever, change this form a little bit to just have all the departments listed and we could just check it. It would be a quick thing instead of writing out yeah. a whole lot of things. Sure. But I think the idea behind it is yeah. But I, I, yeah, yeah. solid. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you could have your department, but I mean, you still need to have some kind of an idea wrote down or what the complaint was actually about. Do we need to take action on the street department? Um, no, it's not a policy okay. or anything. I really don't, I, I just, don't just think it's something. Just a yeah. good. So we're going to do that now then, I take it? Yeah, I might change okay. the form up a little bit. So. And then I guess we'll just keep a file in here and we'll make a copy and give it to whatever department head it needs to go to or whatever. So, more paper. <laughs> but it, I mean, it does serve a good purpose. I'm not being. <laughs> Any questions for Donna? Hmm. Uh, curbside recycling. Julianne yeah. basically said we could wait until next month, next week, if you guys, or next meeting, if you want to wait to talk about that. I know. Um, we discussed it a little bit last time, but I don't think we really got into anything too much. Or you can discuss tonight if you uh -huh. want to. Either way, she yeah, didn't. Was it going to consist of 20 gallon, you said, or we didn't well, know? Well, what he had proposed at one time was uh, the 20 gallon containers back when we had the bids, um, and he showed what those would cost and stuff. You know, um, I had just asked him personally if. I wanted to purchase my own, would they, you know, could they do it on that basis? And, you know, basically, and it makes sense that they're going to have to run a whole different truck for that. So you don't want to just do that for six containers around town. So, I mean, you pretty much either need to do it across the board or not at all, I think, is the, the, what I understood, Terry, and it makes sense. But it would keep... Um, some of your expenses down simply because they wouldn't they have to charge a fee when they dump those trucks at the landfill so when they take it to the recycling place there's no fee there you know they, they don't get any money for it but there's no fee to dump so it saves that that dump fee or whatever it is called yeah, yeah. Okay. let alone you know saving years and all that <laughs> I'd say we hold off on that. Does anybody have any comments about one hour parking at Kansas or land and title office on the uh, south side, you know, third street? During what hours? Uh, I'm sure it's eight eight That'd be right between, right along the courthouse, too, right? It'd be, Is that right? Yeah, on between the, the courthouse yeah. on her side. Yeah. We took the other handicap parking signs. So. Mm. Yeah, I, I was baffled that there's always been a business there. I don't know why it's changed. We've added tons and tons of parking around that courthouse. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh. I guess I don't understand what the benefit of it would be. Yeah. For her, for her or. Yeah, it's going to hinder her just as much as it's going to hinder well, someone going to the courthouse. Yeah. I would think, but I, I don't understand the reasoning behind it. So. You can leave it on old business if you like. I don't me. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed.